Good evening, everyone. It's Tom Sidney Bushnell, aka Numbers, here from Sight Club, the Tom Numbers Show. News with Tom Numbers on top of your game, and I've got my my friend uh, and fellow. What's the de- what's the describing word I can use for yourself, Gene? Everybody knows you as the genius, Gene Decode. So I think that I think that suffices. So, Gene, it's great to have you on the show again. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, Tom. Thank you for having me back. Appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. And before we get going, how can people find you, Gene? Where's the best places for people to, to well, find you? And most likely, you and tonight we got a big one on my um, website on Deep Dives, which is at genedecode.org. So we're I'm doing a uh, a new updated version of the DOMS decodes, Deep Underground Military Bases. So I just put it down because people are saying they don't exist. Um, They do. And so I'm just going very carefully step by step now for the people to understand. This is just a basic introduction. Then I'll have a deep, like underground, (laughs) (laughs) Um, or underwater, however you want to put it, uh, intro and then i'll go into the bases themselves in part three so tonight at 6 30 mountain daylight time we're now in daylight savings which is confusing as heck for me when i'm going to people like you that don't do that (laughs) the time is last time i got mixed up with nicholas vinyamin and he was i got two hours off of what because i recalculated the wrong direction for the hour. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. oh man, really missed the interview. So uh, the um, tonight we'll be doing the, the uh, update. I go into technologies, I show some maps uh, and a little video at the end. I just click through the video that's on YouTube that you can find anywhere of different, you know, bases and tunnels and all of these things and showing the vast amount of boring technologies uh, nuclear technologies for underground, even modular, where they can deassemble and reassemble, kind of like Lego's modular power system for deep underground use. And then additionally, even a scalar uh, nuclear power system. In other words, a standing wave. And then um, there's all kinds of different technologies and things. And I go into some information where I get my information from. I have all the links so people can now do their own research so they can see where I'm getting this. I have things from James Casbolt, from Phil Snyder. Phil Snyder got murdered for putting that information out from Martin William Cooper, who wrote Behold a Pale Horse, which is one of the first books other than Dr. Coleman's book, Committee of 300, when I first woke up to all of this garbage and this Satanism back in 1990, it was pivotal. And I got to actually meet, um, Unfortunately, never Martin William Cooper, but I did get to meet Dr. Coleman in person and talk to him a little bit. So it's a uh, my main place I go is the uh, genedecode.org. I also have a Rumble, which is real Gene Decode. And then, of course, I have a social media presence. I don't actually, but the Blasphemer Service team helps to keep that on social media both on Truth Social and on uh, Twitter and on, I guess that's X now, and on uh, Telegram, which is Real GD Code. So that's where you can find me, everybody. Thank you. And then I have a free website that the Bless for Service also maintains where you can look at documents, get all kinds of things. That's free completely, which is Bless for Service. Also, there's a free section of uh, Deep Dives uh, what I call deep dice, which is the surface area on gdecode.org. It's just the surface area, and you can go look around. You can see a few of the videos, and you can go look around what's on deep dice. You can't view everything, and you do get a three free day trial for, you know, you can look around, look at videos, and if it's four, you have up to three days to cancel it and not get charged. So thank you, Tom, for asking. And where can we find oh, you? Well, <laughs> <you're welcome. laughs> I never asked that well, one every, Everyone go and subscribe to Gene. So I'm on uh, I'm on YouTube on uh, Tom Numbers Site Club on YouTube. I also have Top of Your Game Tom Numbers or Top of Your Game with Tom Numbers on YouTube. It's like my second channel. And I'm on Twitter on X, Real Tom Numbers. I'm on Telegram, LinkedIn, uh, Locals. That's my subscription site. Um, 
Rumble. I'm on. If I said that, I've, I've got a couple of channels on Rumble. So I'm. I think the only ones I'm not on are TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. I think they're the main three that I'm not on. Um, but all the others I am. So, so yeah, links below and and hit Gene's links and uh, subscribe to his his uh, his uh, website. You'll get amazing information there. Um, talking of X, Gene. So there's a few things you brought up that that you just described that I'd like to talk to you more in depth about. But one, you mentioned X and something that came to my attention just probably two weeks ago, maybe slightly less than two weeks ago, was the the X of the eclipse over the United States coming up on 8th of April. Um, and the first one was in 2017 on August 21st. But then, so it went one d- direction and then it's doing another direction um but they they intersect so there's a there's an x and it's interesting because as you've mentioned elon has changed to x uh twitter is uh is 115 in numbers which makes me think of 11 5 november 5th the election this year um and then x is the year 24 because in the simple alphanumeric alphabet the gematria a is one b is two c is three because of the order of the alphabet of the, of the letters and the numbers the 24th letter in the english alphabet is is indeed x so we're in the year of x and we've got this divine um eclipse and uh and there's a lot of x's going around like you know with twitter and some of the coins etc but it was like ah so i wondered if you've got any thoughts on on that on the trajectory of the path and it just seems to me that a lot of these big things that we're seeing are pointing more heavenly more divinely and it's becoming more and more obvious particularly for people in our community that listen to yourself and myself but also for quote unquote maybe more of the normal population that haven't really delved into too many things over the last few years but nevertheless something like that has been to catch quite a few people's attention and if they drill into it for more than 10 seconds they'll know that it it's completing of an X and we're in the year of X 24, you know? So just wanted any thoughts on, or knowledge about that gene that viewers might find interesting. Yes. This eclipse actually was very interesting um, in that it crossed through, I think it was seven or eight cities named Nineveh. Yes. Yeah. Which is really, really interesting. Nineveh was one of the uh, oldest, cities and most populous cities of the Syrian Empire. It was situated on the east bank of the Tigris, which of course that uh, by the modern city of Mosul, M-O-S-U-L, Iraq, I, I'm sure I don't speak Arabic at all, so I, I'm sure I have mispronounced that probably. But um, the Assyrians were notorious for their cruelty and their idolatry. And so, you know, we look at that idolatry and things. That's a lot of what we see going on, especially in the United States with the uh, Satanist worship, what they worship, obviously, I pretty much just said it. <laughs> you know, but, yeah. uh, you know, it's this, um, and Putin, in an interview, he just finished because he's, you know, it's just a few days before the Russian elections. And he just finished this interview when he's talking about the vampirism, where the the deletes, as I call them, the elite delete. You know, we want to delete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now let's delete them. Um, They literally, he said, you know, they fill their stomach with human flesh, but he's Mm. calling vampires. Of course, that means blood, and we know what they use. It's it's a a play on words that he's doing. He's doing a play of yeah. what's called master speak, where he's using words that don't precisely describe what he's saying, but do pre- precisely describe what's happening with the blood of children, what they do to get the, the yeah. A-D-R-E chromey stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, so in that, it's very descriptive of what the Western world is about. And then the Bitcoin, it's also being announced by on X by Ariel, that the Bitcoin is tied to the US dollar, which is getting ready to go into free fall. We now see Putin and the BRICS coming out with a digital version of a uh, way to move over 40, I think it's 40 different um, economic instruments, bonds, et cetera, all kinds of things digitally. 
but Bitcoin is backed by nothing at all. Even the founder of Bitcoin doesn't exist, and it's actually in, it ha the name that is the person that has the founding block actually ties to symbolism. And so if you take the name in two pieces, it has a, a meaning to it to show you how decrepit that system is. Bitcoin is what supplies all of this human trafficking, child trafficking. It is in the dark web how almost 80 to 90 percent of the children and the humans are moved in the underground and auctioned off on the dark web. Like I saw, you know, this person who rescues people coming over the border from the coyotes and then later, three days later, was shown on Channel 4 News. This person was shown rescuing them out of coyote deaths. Four days later, God took me on the dark web and I saw the same children being auctioned off through Bitcoin. So they're being bid on these children that were just rescued to be sold into slavery and, and the worst of the worst kind of things like we saw what happened in the tunnels under New York City with the synagogue kind of thing going on there in which they do these sexual terrible things to children and then they sacrifice them and they have this, they clean them and wash themselves and all this stuff. So you have this going on in the Nineveh temples Long ago, they were, you know, the Assyrians in the Nineveh area had a culture just like that, where it was one of the most important trade routes, but, and it was the Fertile Crescent all went through there. But the significance of the Nineveh of this time of the sun setting and eclipsing, in other words, it's eclipsing on this vampire ball as Putin is kind of putting it, of this vampirism in the West, the sun is setting on that, or it's eclipsing on that. It's coming to an end. And so, you know, we look at this uh, Neolithic, I mean, it's, you're talking Nineveh is Neolithic. It's essentially Stone Age times, by the way they look at it, Copper Stone Age, early what they call chal Chalcolithic. So Lithic goes to stone. So a, a, like a monolith, it's usually saying stone, although now there's all these metal monoliths showing up all over the place. I talked about those yesterday when I into Indigo Indian uh, interview. But the Tigris Euphrates area in the area of this um, Nineveh area in uh, the uh, fourth millennium was such a decrepit and evil area and now we see this exact same kind of thing going on in the U.S. and all over the world, including England. We also see now the London Corporation, now that Lord Rothschild is gone, is eclipsing and going down because he is the world banking system. And Trump, when he went, I showed this, he went to Westminster Abbey, he signed a huge book. That's actually the ledger for the Crown Corporation or the Virginia Company in the U.S., which is the city of London that owns all of the world banks through the Rothschilds that are the representatives for the mace, the payshores, which just means the, the paymaster. And so that's the lower levels of the black nobility and even the black nobility we see. The queen is gone, the king is dying. Now the princess Kate is compromised. She hasn't been seen since March 11th. The sun is eclipsing and going down on this, mm -hmm. I mean, this vampire feast that's been going on since the monolithic era. And yeah. it's a very symbolic of how this eclipse has passed through all of these Nineveh cities that go across and even going into their president, the president, air quotes, of the United States, Sleepy Joe, as Trump calls him. And Putin is talking about Sleepy Joe and how he would prefer him to be reelected and all this. And at the same time, he's laughing because he said that, you know, they're saying he backed Trump, but yet Trump was upset with him because he backed Sleepy. He thought it would be better for Sleepy Joe to be the president. He's easier to handle, in other words, and all of this stuff. But Biden actually said in a recent speech that the color of well, the type of roof you have with the fires that occurred in Texas, you would have not had your home burned to the ground if you had the right type of roof, like what we saw in Hawaii with the mm. fires there. So blue yeah. roofs, certain, because 666, 
you know, an amazing number. Terahertz does not touch the color blue. So all of the stars over that have properties over in Hawaii there where the fire was have the roofs blue and they're literally putting out what they're doing in front of the world. And so we also see Victoria Newland stepping down. We see Jim Carrey stepping down the climate, fake climate, you know, green. Yeah. Below. We see the uh, car manufacturers like Elon Musk going to a hybrid car and even a full out car like Toyota is now producing that, that runs on water, on breaking water so, apart so you can use the hydrogen. So you will be completely clean because all you give off is water vapor. So it's an amazing time that we are in. We're seeing a, uh, I went to my banking institution a few, this last week and uh, I was talking to her, put, making some deposits and pulling out sums of cash and she goes, and, and trying to pay off towards my mortgage to get it down as low as possible. And said, I'm, she goes, what are you doing? I'm trying to get debt free and I'm trying to get cash. It, is this banking institution Basel III compliant? She goes, yeah, I think it is. Could you find out so next time I come back in another week and pull out more cash, <laughs> you know, so they don't think I'm doing anything, you know, that you can't even pull your money out normally anymore, or they think yeah. you're stretching. But, you know, she goes, yeah, I think it is. And I said, yeah, you remember when you had your floor and your walls all torn up here, your concrete floor, and they were putting those tubes in? That was for gold and silver coins. It's pretty obvious that you got trained on all that Nassara stuff. And she actually goes, yeah, we did. <laughs> I was like, got ya, got ya. <laughs> she admitted it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, because if you ask them straight out, they go, I can't talk about that. So yeah, yeah. slid in underneath the radar, as we say. <laughs> so thank you, Can Tom. I ask this, which, which bank I, that, that was, Gene, so people know in America which bank is compliant? Um, mostly I deal with a credit union. Your credit unions are okay. owned by the uh, people themselves. So yeah. I, you know, for me, it's much safer to go into a credit union. You have to be careful because a lot of credit unions um, have so many, like my mom was in a credit union in Arizona, which had fees if you don't use your money for a month. It has fees if you do use your money. Yeah. If you for every, I mean, by the time you get done with the fees, you might as well just put your money in the, in, in a hole in the ground and pull it out when you need it. Or in, yeah. in, she had a lot of money having grown up in the, uh, it, you know, early years of her life in the uh, Great Depression in the United States. I don't know what was so great about why they call it great, I guess, big, but the big depression in which she had a lot of money in coffee, you know, coffee, big coffee, uh, tins and things like that, coffee, uh, what, coffee cans. Yeah, so yes. she uh, yeah. did that all over the house and pieces of soap and all kinds of things, you know, like people growing up in that time frame did. And I said, you'd have been better off keeping all your money, <laughs> you know, because I pulled her money out of like, and she hadn't used it for six months and there was massive charges on them. What are Thank all these me. charges? I go, well, yeah. it's because she's not using her money. And I told, by the time I got done and I was walking out, I told people, pull your money out because you're getting robbed, you know? So with credit unions, you know, they tend to be a better investment, but um, you got to be careful. Yeah, yeah. Maybe put some into gold and silver. I work with, uh, with uh, Matt Geiger from from Midas Gold and he advises people on how to, you know, they can do all of their savings, but if not just a portion, just so they're protected, they've actually got some physical, you know, bullion mm -hmm. they can have as opposed to waking up one day and maybe uh, the Dodds-Frank Act kicks in if they're not, if their bank or union's not compliant. I wanted to ask one other thing, Gene, going back to the X with this eclipse. So you mentioned the royalty and you mentioned presidents. And I noticed, um, so obviously the the thickness of the trajectory is still is quite you know still quite wide, but it's you know it's this big line going across America. But in the path of the trajectory, there are many cities, and as you mentioned, Nineveh, and then the one in twenty seventeen, lots of Salem. So you've got the thing of Jerusalem, but Salem, and so they're the two kind of main ones because there's about I don't know seven 
it's either six or seven or eight, maybe nine sales yeah, that they had, and then uh, similar was in another. I just looked it up. So there are eight, um, eight. Nineveh eight. cities. Yeah. So yeah. there's Nineveh, Texas, Nineveh, uh, we'll just go to Missouri, Texas, Indiana, Ohio, yeah. Pennsylvania, Virginia, New York, and Nova Scotia. Yeah. And there's also, so I noticed this, there's lots of small towns along the way, but people can look and you'll find in this path that's going to happen on the 8th of April, there's also... Um, a town called Windsor, which is the house of the you know the royal family's adopted name, and you've talked about that being falling, and effectively it's going to be covered in darkness as this eclipse takes place. And then the next one down, going in a north in, in a southwesterly direction, is Clinton. And I thought that was really interesting. It's like you've got the Windsors being covered up, <laughs> they're going, and the Clintons. So metaphorically, energetically. And also townlistically, if that's a real word, which it probably isn't, but I'd be going to claim it for today. You've got Windsor and you've got Clintons being covered in darkness as this as this eclipse takes place along the Nineveh line, which I thought was interesting. Yeah, and it's interesting, you know, how it comes through Canada, Windsor, of course, being in Ontario, and then coming down across the U.S. and all the way through Texas. It's just extremely fascinating how this and like you mentioned also the, the previous one ties to yeah. what's going on in the world yeah yeah do you think um the other thing with the whole thing with x so i was originally thinking it was going because i was looking at it on a map and it was you know a big blown up picture of the us but then it's going through and you could see it's not i mean it, relatively from english terms it's far away but us terms it's not far so it's quite close to Kansas City, Missouri, and I've talked about that quite a lot. But it's actually maybe a few couple miles, a couple hundred miles, maybe four hundred miles across, going uh, east. But someone kindly pointed out that lives right near the kind of the point of of the two crosses, well, the two lines making the cross, and it's a town called Carbondale. And I thought that was really interesting. I was like, "Ha, huh, Carbondale." So it's like. You know, you've got the silicone agenda, you've got the carbon, you know, the attack on humanity. We're carbon, but if we're upgraded and we become more crystalline as we get upgraded, I was like, that's very interesting that this X lands, X marks the spot, and the actual town is called Carbon Dale, which I thought was, again, quite interesting. You know, it could be called anything. I've never even heard of a place called Carbon Dale, but, that's, but nevertheless, there it is. And it's like you've got X's obviously in DNA. You know, you've got the chromosomes, either X, Y or X, X. And it's like, what's this whole thing of X and carbon? You know, and we've, we've had the two agendas going on and obviously God wins. And it's interesting that the, the start, you know, the, the line of the, of the heavenly bodies are pointing that out. They're, they're smudging out, you know, the bad names. But also, if you look beyond, you can see, you know, carbon is, is right there and, uh, just fascinating. I think it's a, I think it's really it's amazing how it's been orchestrated and it's obviously been planned for divinely for a long time. It's you know it was coming and it's about to arrive. Yes, and you know of course Clinton is in Arkansas. <laughs> no big surprise, but most people already now know. I believe that a lot of the children and people that disappeared in Haiti, like Trump said in Haiti, yeah, taken. It takes a city, you know. Uh, to, you know, a town or something, he made a comment, he says, and, and Hillary's taken many in Haiti. So it's tying to this. And then um, additionally, the X to me also means like Christ on the cross when he was laid, yeah. the X ground marks the spot where Christ was laid. We go to the cross, but not with Christ on the cross. He was laid to rest and he rose after three days. So it's talking to the resurrection of and that we are given and this is the time of that resurrection and i did a video that's i'll be putting up on my real gene decode rumble that's on deep dives about the change of the separation of the what i call the a line and the g line the god line and the arma line <laughs> just call it that the arma line and so people are saying the arma line is the only thing that exists but the Shaolin Master Ji Hen Yi is actually talking, as well as the Blade Divide 144,000, of this shift of a natural separation 
of the two timelines and many will not be able to make it or won't make it or don't want to make it. And so we see even uh, Ariel on Twitter on X is talking about the harsh realities of speaking truth to power, uh, which yeah. is a reflection on courage, sacrifice, and then the allure of comfort. So talking about the whistleblower, John Barnett, who was you know, murdered recently, uh, I believe, if I'm correct, it's the same one for exposing Boeing uh, aircraft, the, the Airbus, and the situations involving that. And people like myself that wish to remain anonymous, I want it to be about the message I bring. And if it doesn't fit you, then go to where the message does fit you. If you want to be on the Arma line and believe there are no doms and the world's flat, fine. Go ahead and go there. That's not my choice. But if you want that and, you know, I watched a, another recent video that Ariel posted, uh, or maybe it was another person, and it was a KGB person talking about the submersion of uh, intellect of a whole culture into propaganda for so long that even if they get proof that what they know is completely wrong, they cannot see it. Even if you literally took them, he said it was a KGB guy, you could take them to a Stalag in Russia, they still wouldn't believe it unless you kicked them in the hindsight to where it crushed their, their jewels, so to speak. That Would they believe it? So it's this, you know, the message People can't hear it, but they want others like myself who are wanting to remain anonymous to expose themselves so they can watch us tap dance. And Ariel talks about this, that they want to live in their ivory towers of power and wealth, yeah. and, you know, and status, power, and control. And it's no longer survival of the fish. Ariel speaks to survival of the fittest. For me, it's survival of the filthiest of these deletes that want to rule this way. And he, and Ariel, he refers to the movie Matrix, of course, that's an X again. And then we look at that and the role of Cypher in that Cypher. Movie, yeah. which yeah. Cypher is not actually decoding like the world gave me gene decode because I take information that's hidden and I decode it. He was actually, Cypher means to encode. And what was Cypher doing? He wanted his steak and his potatoes and to sacrifice everybody for that so he could have his comfort zone while everybody else got sacrificed and yeah. he served the elites he served the system he betrayed people and threw them under the bus he was actually on the ship nebuchadnezzar so now you go to what is the truth about nebuchadnezzar and what kind of a person was he he is the one that went in and sacrificed and invaded jerusalem and tore down you know, a lot and killed a lot of Hebrew or what we call Jewish people today. And so it is really fascinating to see how all of this ties together. Um, you know, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, all of these posts by Ariel is, are really enlightening now of where we are, uh, what's going on in the world, plus what you brought up on the eclipse. Everything is just um, incredibly in, in elucidating and enlightening. You know, you look at, for example, just the life of Nebuchadnezzar and the type of things he did, you know, and how evil he was. And, you know, that was the um, 1200, uh, about, well, let's see, around 1100 BC, which is when he ruled. And so um, he did, the, he laid siege to Jerusalem, he looted the golden treasures, he, he destroyed the temple. Uh, all of these things. Um, he abducted the Judean king from his court. He uh, ruled Babylon from the year 605 to 502 BC. I guess that's years ago is what I was referring to previously. So just to make it clear for people. And he was the most influential of the reigning kings of the Neo-Babylonian. And it's interesting they, that it's referred to as Neo because we talk about Neo-Cons today. And uh, he, con he conducted the city of Babylon to its height of power. But at the same time, you know, he was again in this uh, Syrian area where we're talking previously with Nineveh and all of this, which is the same Fertile Crescent area of the world. Uh, and he subjugated and destroyed, you know, just like we see in Gaza, 
many, many, many really fine and good people that are the bloodlines of Christ, of the two blood, you know, the, uh, that protect the bloodline of Christ, sorry, the bloodlines of Abraham, which is Ishmael and Isaac. So these are the Ishmaeli that are in Palestine, which guard the bloodline of Christ, the Druze bloodline, of which Trump is part of. So it's, and we watch the uh, constant attempt to crucify Trump, and it's yeah. never working. It's never, ever working. And so um, it's just really insanely amazing how all of this is coming about and um, continuing on and we're seeing everything as a you know symbology so you know Ariel talking about the matrix the X there which goes to the cipher and his role in the Nebuchadnezzar and that ties to Nineveh and Syria through Syria and um, you know people wanting to have their status quo while other people risk themselves like this gentleman who was talking about the Airbus, John Barnett. Plus we have the young gentleman, Aaron Bushnell, who could not take the orders he was given to be ready to go to Palestine in a moment's notice. So he emulated himself in front of the Israel embassy. And now all kinds of retired Air Force personnel are burning their uniforms. And remember Aaron Bushnell, free Palestine. We're watching the separation of the wheat from the chaff and young men incredibly beyond my comprehension heroic and they demonize him immediately and say all this stuff he's a uh, you know Aryan or whatever you know it's just on and on they demonize the good people and then people turn on the good people and demonize them further and they're just wanting to be like cypher they want to enjoy all the fruits without really having to work for them to really get out there and to do the hard work and to risk their safety. And they want somebody to risk it all and then they can get rid of them. So I'm doing my best not to risk it all so they get rid of me, but thank you, mm -hmm. Tom. Yeah, you're, you're right, Gene. And yeah, Aaron Bushnell, obviously I noticed him with his story and his name, same as my last name. And, um, and Ariel, I, I follow Ariel's posts, and, and I know the one you're talking about, how he described how they want, you know, anons to reveal themselves so they can, you know, attack them even more. Um, one, I was going to ask you this question, but now you brought it up. So Ariel talked about maybe a week or two ago, he talked about these, uh, for want of a better phrase, monsters in national parks, ones that most of us aren't aware of. Um and he said, you know, there are, he basically was describing them and giving lots of accounts of it or pointing us to it where people give testimonials of their encounters with them. Um, and they always have to tell you, don't they? You know, so you've got things like American Werewolf, American Werewolf in London. You've got all these things in films and in stories and TV shows, but 99% of the time it's usually a documentary at some level. But it was quite fascinating how he said, you know, we've got to be careful of these these beasts, you know, that are, looks like they're going to come to the surface more because of the of the destruction of the the dams and other areas where they may have been, and with the final cleansing. But do you have any commentary on that? In terms, of, you've probably spoken about it in a lot of your work in the past, but maybe some um, current stuff in regards to that with what Ariel was talking about about these, you know, these beasts that and what they are and who they are and why they're there and, and what people maybe need to be aware of in terms of enjoying nature. I don't want to put Google off going out on trails and all the rest of you. That's one of God's wonderful things of being here on earth, but he did point the finger and, and the, the, the word of caution in regards to those beasts that probably 99.9% .9 of the population have no idea exist. Yeah. So it's realize who the cabal and what type of individuals they are. They're psychopathic Satanists, uh, narcissists, which if they are coming to where they know they're going to lose and they have all of these assets, like these cryptid creatures that they created of a mixture of, you know, some animal, and wolves, whatever, and humans, and whatever else, these chimera, they're not going to allow them just to be burned to death in the dumps. They'll release them. And the, of course, there's many dumps under national parks. You look at all the 411s of people being disappearing. And I 
don't even go into them since I've had my husky dogs because they don't allow you to take your dogs outside of the parking lots on the trails, even on leash. Why? Because a dog will defend you against that kind of creature. And then it could, a powerful big dog could damage or even possibly, if it's trained how to do these things, kill such a creature. And that's a value, an asset to the cabal. They have all of these things. They're not going to just let them be destroyed in the dumps with themselves. They'll loose them out in the world to make it harder for the general populace. They look at us as vermin anyway. They just want us to be destroyed so they can inherit the earth and own it all. Um, they're just wanting it to be, again, tied to the carbon and the graphene and the black goo that Harold Koch talks about with Dr. Lee Merritt recently about the bad black goo that came here, he says, from a world. It's actually two worlds, Ariana and Nan, the constellation Scion that blew up, and now that black goo, the bad black goo, is here, and they're using all of this in the recent uh, uh, warp speed, you know, kind of thing of giving everybody this in their arm in which they're being AI'd. And so we're tying all of these things together, like you said, Carbondale. And I don't think it's any accident that your name and Aaron Bushnell, your last names are the same. It's tying everything together. This is how God works. Everything is being tied together. So these cryptid creatures in the national parks, I was going up last winter for a vacation up in the mountains and they had a whole section of the road shut down for shoulder work they said and i know that road really really well there is no shoulder and, okay so we had to take this long route around in the middle of the night and all of these people i know a construction worker they have a certain body type most of the time even the flag wavers and all this what i was looking at are not construction workers i'm looking at special forces I go, crypt is on the loose. That's what we're dealing with here. And they had the right type of vehicles to grab them and put them in the vehicles. You're not looking at construction equipment. You're looking at big, huge vehicles to put something in there that's not rocks and not concrete and none of this stuff. Then when we came back and it was open, there was nothing done. The ground was unturned. The road was not changed. There was no new asphalt, no broken asphalt, no broken shoulder, no new, you know, metal curbing, you know, the metal guardrails. Nothing was changed at all. They had done no work on the shoulder whatsoever. So I know, you know, what I'm seeing and what makes sense. You know, you have to learn to open your eyes. What does you're being told fit to what they are saying and what you're seeing? Do those all fit? What is the most logical? Thing. And so you look at these cryptids and these other kind of creatures. I talked about this with Carson. She goes, ah, I don't believe in that stuff. Uh, I don't only believe in it. I absolutely know it's so. I've actually seen some of these kind of creatures. There's a certain area that if you go through, it's the movie um, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Killer speaks to this. There's an area they did a treaty at the end of the Civil War. Part of it was to have the United States a, world, a country of the living and not the undead. And that Battle of Gettysburg and all of that, it's pretty much a documentary. You look at the, the North when they were going house to house and rounding up silver to go by the Underground Railroad. They went by railroad, and of course they looked at the actual railroad and not the Underground Railroad, to bring silver and to make bullets and things for the Battle of Gettysburg that they were losing. The North was losing, and he suddenly turned it around. And there's an area in the, um, when you drive across the country in one of the lower highways, I'll just say, when you go through a mountain range, people will know what I mean, where the road, the highway loops 90 miles north and then comes 90 miles south. I go, why in the world am I going 180 miles loop when I could do this little road that goes nine miles straight over this mountain range? How bad can it be? It was sunset when I started to go in. It was sunrise when I came out after nine miles of the worst, it, I mean, the most incredibly unnerving thing I've ever gone through of seeing these kind of creatures constantly. What about this, Jane, please? Um... I'll just say a lower highway, the highways in the United States, you know, you have I-70, uh, 60, 40, et cetera. They go down in number from north to south. They all end in zeros. I mean, east to west, sorry. 
And so one of these highways loops way up. I had to go from, um, I was being transferred from Hawaii to Charleston, but I had to pick up a submarine in Florida, which was going to go across to um, Holy Lock, Scotland. And so I had to, I picked up my car to drive it all the way across the country. And I had a friend that would drive it from Florida back up to Charleston and drop it off there for me. So I'd have it when I got back. And so in this process of driving through this area, I don't want to say because I don't want to endanger people's lives in what, who want to go into this area. Because when I got out of there, I was just warped out of my mind. I had zombies and vampires. And at one point I got on E on my gas tank, I pulled into a 7-Eleven, you had to go back and that was before credit card, I had to go in and put 20 down on the 20 would buy it, nothing now hardly, but you know, 20 on the pump. And I went to the door and the thing behind the register looked at me with red glowing eyes and smiled, I had thanks. I'm like, God, please make the gas last somehow. <laughs> I'm on E, but I've got four miles to go. <laughs> I've already spent half a tank. <laughs> so I got there. To the the register, the person, the, the cash register was one of these creatures. Vampires, yeah, a vampire, like what Putin said. And then when I got to the uh, the gas, you know, little cafe truck stop, in other words, at the other end, when the highway came back down to go to Florida, mm. I pulled in and I was just exhausted. I still had to go to Cocoa Beach and I was running out of time. So I pulled in and I walked in and the, the waitress comes up to me and she said, is there uh what would you like would you like some coffee i could just leave the whole pot <laughs> so warped out she goes you look like you've been run through the ringer you've been driving all night yeah she goes where are you coming from uh la but the worst part was the last leg and she looked at me and she goes where did you drive through and i told her it's suddenly i mean you know a diner in the morning breakfast all the truckers are in it's deafening suddenly you could have heard a pin drop <laughs> it was like everybody's turning and looking at me goes you didn't take the road that i go yeah i did so she, goes, she put the coffee down and she spilled my water on me she goes i'm sorry let me clean that up and in the process she knocked the salt shaker all over and somehow the top was loose. I don't know if she slid a hand, took it loose, and the salt went on me. And she went and said, I'll get you fresh water and silverware and napkin and place sitting and all. She went back and she goes, for you, the best in the house. And she gave me real silver, silverware made out of silver. She handed it to me, so I had to touch it. I did not know at that time what she was doing. I now know she was vetting me to see if I did dirt. It was holy water. <laughs> Yeah. And it's real silver and salt. I'm like, well, yeah, you're testing me to see if I got hit by a vampire. And then she goes, whatever you want is on the house, the whole breakfast. And then truckers were going by and dropping big bills, 20s, 50s, and even 100 a couple of times and going, son, you must be have the hand of God on you. <laughs> I was like, I had no idea at the time. I just thought I was very fortunate to make it through it all but it really speaks to what you're saying about these kind of creatures that are out there they are out there and it is for real if you look at the appalachian trail and how many people disappear per year on that and think about is it just regular everyday people hunting people we have those types you know like the uh, people that we've known the mass murderers however yeah. is it also some other kinds of creatures and i would from my estimation, say, hmm, uh, it very well could be, very likely because of my experiences in that area. How long, that area that you're talking about, Gene, how long, and I'm assuming, well, maybe it's a two-part question. When, when, when would, you might have said it, in, I've been so you know, immersed in what you're saying. When did that take, that event, that experience for you, how long ago was that? So let me see, I was Reporting on to, that was my last duty I, on submarines. I went to surface duty after that, shore duty as we call it. Uh, let's see, 1984. Huh, interesting, 1984, okay. And to your knowledge, 
if you were to go through that route again, would you encounter those things or is maybe a lot of some of that being cleaned up through, you know, the military maneuvers in the last four years and maybe, you know, prior to that, or is it, would that still be kind of considered a hot spot in your understanding? Well, you'd have to go look at the treaties if they have expired, because at the end of the civil war, Lincoln did a treaty with the lead, you know, empire <laughs> so that right. they could have an area within the U S and they would be allocated to that area and not interfered in that area. So do we now have the right to interfere with them? I don't know. Interesting. So that's been going on maybe, what, a couple of centuries then, at least. Yeah, I would huh. say. And what? why did they land in America? Were they created in America, or did they come from somewhere else and then set into uh, there? Oh, it's a very, very ancient thing that happened. It's during the time of Christ. It ties to Judas Iscariot. Does it? Mm-hmm. Does it go? Does it go back as ah? Does it go back as far as Cain when he was cursed and like couldn't be killed? It ties that ties into it, but the silver situation ties to Judas Iscariot taking silver to betray Christ, and the what God did to him for that. Ah, so was so was Judas was so he's one. Sorry, go on was the first ah okay and it would it be fair to say J judas is still would he still be living i would think it's possible i okay. don't know he literally is christ here is he literally on the earth at this time not just out in the space somewhere or something is he literally walking this earth then that could be done but it would depend on things I don't know. You're saying if Christ was here right now? In flesh again, because he's at the end, he's supposed to return. Yeah, he is. We are at the end. Where we are within that end time, I don't know, because the popes have pulled years in added years to the calendar we have to the point I know we're not in 2024 in actuality. We're three to I don't know, possibly eight or more years off, plus or minus, I don't know. It's, I don't even think that they know anymore. They've messed with it so badly and records have been lost that it's no longer possible to know as far as I can understand it. Wow. Wow. So a thought I'm having is President Trump Juan says this to me quite a bit. When I call him up, he'll just, I'll say, how are you doing? He said, oh, I'm putting monsters in the boxes. That's one of his phrases. But President Trump has said it a few times at rallies. He's pointed people out. He's talked either directly and said they're monsters or he's said that the things that they were all in and around were was a monster production, but they're no longer in it. But there's one recently that he did, and he's done the show with these guys a few times. So there's a, there's a, there's a, a couple of podcasters the Nelk boys, and they've been to Mar-a-Lago and interviewed President Trump, and they're just big, you know, they're big popular culture YouTubers. But something that caught my attention just in the last week, maybe last 10 days or so, he said clearly they went and they met him again, and uh, and he just said, and they look really quite inconspicuous. They look, you know, they're quite young looking. They don't look the tallest of guys. And he just said, yeah, these guys are monsters. And he pointed it out. And he said, you really, what did, what, how did he say? He said, these guys are monsters. And he said, you wouldn't think so, or you'd never think so, something like that. And I was like, and my first thought was he was saying they're part of, you know, the deep state, they're part of the problem. Um, but now you're talking about this, I'm thinking, wow, maybe President Trump is even revealing something even deeper that, you know, than what we first thought. Because um, we know, he, you know, he, the people he points out, not in probably all cases, I hope not in all cases, but when he singles people out and praises them, there's usually you know double comes with that. But when he said these these guys, yeah, they're monsters, and you you know you'd be really surprised. You'd never think it. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's referring to this. Maybe they're part of this quote unquote bloodline that are in society. I agree. I 
he wow. I'm sure does know the truth. I'm sure he does. <laughs> wow. Wow. So going back to the time of Christ and with Judas Iscariot and they had a place in the States, are there other, so the, the legend or the reality of vampire uh, of Count Dracula is in, is in Romania, in Transylvania. Um, I've even heard a, a Christ connection about that, but I'm not, I don't really know anything other than that. And you've said about the thing with Judas Iscariot and Christ, the time of Christ. Are there other places on the earth? Like is the, the myth or the truth of, of Transylvania with vampires, is that a similar situation to this area in the United States that you're talking about in terms of vampires? Yeah. Of course, the U.S. did not exist during the time of the Christ, you know, and that, all of that. Um, so we're looking, where does he go immediately after that time? Where does Judas go? Romania. He goes from right hmm. Wow. Wow. So Vlad the Impaler, is that Judas Iscariot or is that part of his lineage? His lineage. Wow, this is mind-boggling, Jane. I didn't know this, but it's making so much sense. Yeah. It's really, where was Vlad the Impaler? Romania. Yeah. There are no coincidences. It's all coincidences. Yes. Bran Castle, also known as Dracula's Castle, was in Transylvania, Romania, in the 14th century fortress, was you know, in the home of Vlad. So I went there a few years ago to visit. Oh it's, really? Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of interesting because it's not it's not as imposing as you would necessarily think. I mean the bus ride is it's like this kind of have you mm -hmm. seen the film Lost Boys with um oh, yes, I've seen it. Corey, yeah. the two Corries and and it, it feels a little bit like you're on the bus and it's kind of like really old and these kind of red curtains and dangly trinkets and things. It's, it's quite, it's like getting you ready. But then you get to Bram's castle and it's all been whitewashed. It's all really, it's quite, it doesn't even feel that old. Uh, maybe it's had a bit of a refit and, you know, and there's, you know, it's like a museum as you walk around it, but it's not quite what I thought it, you know, I didn't really know what to expect, but it was, it wasn't quite as, uh, as ominous as I maybe thought it might be. Um, but wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Can of we course, go into his Sorry, go on. was actually Poneri Castle. Uh, again, I don't his speak... castle was what? Poneri Castle. P I don't speak Romanian. It's P-O-E-N-A-R-I, Poneri Castle. Ah, uh, okay. So, they swapped it. So, the, so the one that people can go and visit now is not the real castle. Yeah, the real one is Poneri Castle, which is in the um, area of um, Bucure near Bucharest in Car. It's in Carl Park, Carol Park, Carl Carol. I don't know how you want to pronounce it. It's Romanian, so I okay, made yeah. it English. I don't know in that case. Carol is pretty English, but I don't know. Yeah, there's a place that's so interesting. So there's, I went there, um, twenty, would have been twenty sixteen, and uh, which was an interesting year in many ways. Um, it was on the leap year and all these other things, you know, Trump got in power, Brexit, all the celebrity deaths, Leicester City when the Premier League. But I went there that year just for a couple of days and went there one afternoon. But we were traveling, if I remember, traveling north. So we've been in Bucharest and then we went up to Karaman. So that's interesting you're saying that. Yeah, that region. So there's a Karaman. It's like a mountain range with a cross on top. Really beautiful place. They have a ski resort. The snow wasn't there, but you could see the, you know, the dry ski slope and, and then we went up to um, <clears throat> the Naya, uh, Castle Pledge, um, uh, Bush Den, Brush Off, and and off to the off to the Dracula's Castle. Yeah, um, and it's it's not it's not that far really. From it was a you know train ride, and then we took the coach, the bus. Um, wow! So that's where he, that's where Judas went. What was it then? So can we? Drill into that a little bit more about, I guess, the curse or the what God, what Christ did with with Judas because of what he did, and what was, I guess, the outcome is he, you know, he became the first of the vampires. But what was, 
what was said at the time of his betrayal and what was the kind of curse for one of a better phrase that he was given that made him become that because i i guess there's a little bit of a gap in most people's knowledge of okay people know about 30 pieces of silver judas iscariot but to jump to to being a vampire there's a little bit of a gap there that people don't really understand or know about yeah i would require a full decode but you know you think of why romania and what else yeah. is romania? we have they're drawn to areas of power. So we have Bucheg Mountain and that massive complex that ties by tunnel systems all the way to the Giza Plateau and the Pyramid of Giza and the, comes up into the, uh, those tunnels literally come up underneath the Sphinx, which is where the library is. Uh, and so you have the Sphinx in, in Buchegi, and then you have the Sphinx in Giza Plateau and all of those tunnel systems from Giza. And then that then ties to Jerusalem. We're going back to the tie to Jerusalem and Syria and all of this. And we have what happened with Iraq when the US invaded in Desert Storm trying to get the, the Stargate system. And he escaped with a dial-up device to Syria through tunnels to Syria. You see how everything's getting interconnected and we have the tunnel system that goes from the Vatican through Albania and down into Jerusalem. So everything is all getting interconnected now and all of these things are coming together. It's how the end time works. It's everything that all of the power and all of the gold and all of, all of it is coming out in front of everything and it's all interconnected. That's why people say I do these huge like round round circles they get lost but it's all it's because everything is interconnected yeah wow talking about the power of romania then is there uh, talking of other podcasters so you've got the nelk boys and then you've got the tate brothers and they're english but they've decided to live out in romania and they were saying well we live here because it's a better you know it's a less hassle system. And then they got reported as being arrested for a few months, whether that was real or not, I don't know, but that's the narrative that is out in the public. But they reside in Romania. Is there, to your knowledge, any reason that they would be doing that in terms of because it's this place of power? Yeah, because you have the J.D. Mountain Complex where that viewing system and all that holographic 3D viewing system, you can read, you literally actually go there. When you're in that, the person, um, Cinnabar, I think was the name of the person or something, or it's in the Cinnabar books at least, but he actually went back to the time of Christ and Christ looked at him because he's there in a soul body and said he'd been waiting for him and he gave him information for this time. And we look where else, do, there's two main tunnel systems from Buchegi. One goes to Giza Plateau, the other one goes to Tibet which is one of the entrances to inner earth that goes to the valley of the moon, which they talk about in Lost Horizons, which is one of the entrances into the center of the earth. It's the tunnel system that goes all the way to the center of earth. It's in Tibet. And they, they show that in the movie Lost Horizons, a lot of which has been lost and uh, they've recovered what they can and remastered it. So you can see a lot of the information, but it's an area in the Tibetan plateau, or not plateau, but the mountains, the that, the largest mountains on earth. And you go and look at that and it's kind of tropical like because it's tied to the inner earth and these tunnel systems that go everywhere. I mean, they, they connect to these key areas. And so you have the, uh, the sphinxes in all these areas too. So, you know, you look at the undiscovered tunnels linking the sphinxes uh, undiscovered quote, <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know, like the Sphinx and, and Babel and all of these other things. So uh, it's just really, really fascinating to watch now as everything rolls out, how all of these things are tied together. And, and they also tie through ley lines and all of these monoliths that are appearing uh -huh. um, and all of these things all happening at the same time we're seeing everything coming out all of it is tying together and coming out in front of the whole world 
and there's even monasteries uh, and mysteries that are hidden in the Bichegi Mountains um, that tie to the Carpathian Mountains, secret tunnels all over the place, the Bichegi Mountain Hall of Records. Um, so, you know, those books are called Transylvania Sunrise. If people want to look them up, we're trans, our Romanian coordinator for the Blessed for Service. There's one that's only in Romanian. We'll have that up uh, as she's working on getting those all done to be able to translate those for people. Wow. In terms of the tunnels and particularly the quote unquote, the ancient tunnels, did they have, were they tunnels that people would just walk and do a pilgrimage, you know, through the tunnels that would take them weeks and months to get places or did that they back then have technology that could transport them very quickly to get to these other locations. So if you're in Romania and you go back to the Giza Plateau, or if you go to Tibet, I guess it's some form of technology that created the tunnels in the first place. Is there also an equal technology that was available, you know, hundreds oh, they, of thousands of years ago that could transport people back and forth? There's the tunnels have still even way back then you have stargate systems and portal systems. Those existed. Okay. The, even the ancient Egyptians knew how to do this. So there's these hidden technologies. You can see some of it being used, like when they grabbed Jack New uh, de Molay on Friday the 13th, they grabbed all of the Knights Templar as the ships came into the docks throughout all of Europe within hours. How in that time of Jack de Molay do they have the communication ability and he was coming back, you know, believed to be carrying one of the crystal skulls, which was one day the Cabal did not have, which is the skull, crystal skull of the Carthaginians, and so from Carthage. And so um, it's just called Carthaginian. I don't know why they call it Carthaginian. It's Carthage, but it is what it is. So these crystal skulls are of immense ability and power and they wanted to have them all. They still don't have them all. I, I do know of somebody who had one. Uh, I don't know who he gave it to. That person's no longer alive. But uh, these, again, everything's coming out. So you have the crystal skulls coming into, we had that movie about crystal skulls by the, um, you know. Indiana the, Jones. Yeah, Indiana Jones, the Tomb Raider, not Tomb Raider, sorry, Indiana Jones and the, you know, the, all of the movies he's had. Yeah. Wow. And so with the, with the portal, so the portal was the, the Stargates was the mode of, uh, of transport. Are there instances where you could have Stargates and people wouldn't, uh, it, you didn't even need a tunnel. You could just go from point A to point B through the Stargate on a, on a planet. Of course. Okay. And then if that, with that being said, what would be the point for the tunnel itself? For those that, the tunnel goes to many destinations as it goes. So if you don't want to go from point A to Z right away, you've got destinations in between that the tunnel goes to. Okay. So the tunnel could physically be a, you know, a tunnel and people could use it in a traditional way, i.e. mechanically, physically moving through that and they could take detours and stop and do whatever they need to. But then you can jump and speed up via the start gates. Yes. Okay. Wow. Something that Ariel did maybe, maybe a month ago, you probably saw it gene he talked about the beatles the music group the beatles and the cassette tape and he gave this example of of uh, someone who had had time traveled they'd gone into a different dimension and they'd ended up in a new place um, um he was actually rescued he fell and hurt himself and a person that's it. yeah yeah from a parallel earth on a different timeline rescued him took him back to his earth and the Beatles yeah. were still together all alive producing music and he pirated a cassette tape and brought it back yeah. that's it you remembered it and described it far more eloquently than I did so in terms of that so that got me thinking about 
so we're all sharing this existence together, but there's, you know, there's multi dimensions, there's multi universes, parallel universes, parallel timelines. As we move forward and we go into this ascension, and we, you know, you've mentioned some people that just don't make it, just don't won't wake up, they won't make it. As we go into these dimensions of of a reality and other universes, will we get to the point where we can? choose the universe that we want to occupy and be in so for example say we're in a beautiful part of the world and um we maybe have neighbors or other people in the community around us that maybe aren't on the same frequency as ourselves and they're okay but they just do their things and it can kind of become a bit of an inconvenience or whatever but would we get to the point where we can actually say okay i love this version of this reality but i'd like an upgrade of it. i'd like it to be slightly different and i'd like to just be around people that are totally on my frequency friends and family close loved ones that are the are all on the same page as opposed to having to interact with others that just for want of a better word stink the place out because of their vibration they just don't get it which is what we're, a lot of us are facing right now you know we're in this world but we feel we're in the world but not of it that's what a lot of us feel so a lot of the audience will feel that I feel that I'm sure you must feel that you know, most of the, well, probably a lot of the time, but would we get to the point where we can actually say, okay, we're very happy with this reality, but we'd like to have a, an upgraded polished version where we don't have to interact or deal with the, just the mundane of the lower vibrations of, of dimensions. Well, what is occurring now is all of the timelines are going into two lines only. They're essentially there now. We're very close to the time where there's only two, which is the A line and the G line. That's it. Because once you go through the CME, which is kind of like a peduncle, the peduncle's that narrow part in an hourglass where all the sand has to pass through. In this case, only two possibilities can go through that. One is which in service to God, in uttermost, in a very high vibration of everybody functioning kindly, compassionately. It's right the Shaolin, Nashi Shihini was saying. Many can't do it because they can't function there and many won't and they don't want to. So they don't or can't or won't function like that. And so in this case, what we're looking at is those people that can and do and will and have chosen to be kind and considerate and respectful and truthful and honest and do the best they can do and not hold people responsible for their choices. Your choices are yours. You bear the responsibility of the outcome because or the one that chose whether somebody advised you or not is not really relevant. You still have choice. You're the one to chose to go move somewhere, or you're the one that chose to listen and believe something or whatever. That's why that said, be careful who you follow, because in that it's you know a warning to follow the tr people that resonate with you. Because in this time, the people that resonate, that are kind and compassionate, and loving and not throwing each other under the t tank, not even a bus anymore, and not yeah. calling this person and that person and one after another. It's calling the information out, but not calling the people. Even, you know, I've talked about a few today, but I don't sit there and say they're absolutely evil. I say they're doing these things. Anybody can come back through the gift of Christ. Anybody, any creature, anybody at all. It, if you're a sentient being that can make choice, that choice can be made and you have time but you don't have a lot and so what we're seeing is surrounding yourself with good people and that make good choices and they're kind and compassionate but take responsibility and don't blame you like you know it's your fault it's not anybody but yourself that is and it's not a matter of fault anyway it's a matter of what you choose to experience so do you choose to experience a world without all of this child trafficking, without this? Then become that in the choices you make, in the thoughts and feelings and emotions, in the words you speak, in what you do. Become that. I've even you know, been working on myself very hard lately to try to resonate better with this myself because realizing the time we're in is coming down to be very careful of what I say to who and even within my close-knit groups of people, mm -hmm. are they ready to hear certain things? Is it above and beyond? It's again back to where the KGB guy said, if you, I meet people out in public and you meet somebody and they cannot understand the truth. 
you could literally put it in front of them. There are people, you know, like Flat Earth, let's give an example, that is incredibly insane to me. That it doesn't matter if you prove it to them. You absolutely show them proof, like you're watching the sun go down, and then you're seeing the bottom of planes reflecting the sun above you. But the sun's below the horizon. If it's flat, it's not going to be on the bottom of the plane. They say, well, it's because the plane's pitched up. What if the plane's heading away from the sun and you still see it on the bottom of the plane? Can't be. It can't be. It's absolutely impossible. Go, and, you know, it doesn't matter how low the sun is over the earth or whatever. And why is the sun not getting smaller and smaller and smaller as it's going farther and farther away? If it's staying at the same altitude, there's things, it doesn't matter what you show, you know, like I was on Nino's platform and they wanted me to debate this flat earth. I go, it doesn't matter what you show them, what you explain to them, what you prove to them. I could literally take them in space and show them, you know, somebody could do that and they're going to go. No, no, <laughs> you're you hypnotized me, or you put me under some kind of something, <laughs> a hallucinogenic drug, or something. It doesn't. It's literally what the KGB said. That guy, you know, he said you're going to have to kick him in the, you know, in the jewels to make the crush him. They're going to wake up. So you have to put things that they can hear, yeah, and respect them, and give them things. So recently, when I'm out talking to people, I will give them things that I know based on that they're shopping or there's something or they're at some store and I see them going into the pharmaceutical section. And, you know, there was a lady, um, I was in a store and her arm was constantly tremoring. I went to get a, a zipper pulls, a whole bunch of new zipper pulls to fix my down jackets and down since we're in winter and the poles of the jacket keeps coming open and you can do a temporary fix by squeezing it with knee, uh, needle nose pliers. But that's only temporary and it'll spread again. So now mine are spreading again. So I was getting a big pack of zipper pulls and you can cut the little tap at the top off and then put a new zipper pull on and then sew it and then put a little bit of uh, nylon dripping on it and it'll seal it so the zipper pull can't come off. And this lady was constantly tremoring. I said, if you go downtown, there's a Chinese school, a Chinese medicine school. You can go in the evenings, they have the patients are not the patients the student clinics where they take patients for free and you can get tra treatments for free and you want to look into things they can diagnose you and get herbs and everything and there's many many things she goes well it's many many different things going on yeah they can do many many things there's other things besides the western pharmaceutical stuff there's many things that will actually help bring your energies and things back up with the liver that's partly liver, that's partly a few other things, but they can help you a lot. And she's, you know, it did help her, but she was very interested in taking the information down. So it's to give people information where their brains are not so washed, they can't hear it, to respect them, to help them along the way. Now she sees there, she does that. She sees, well, there are alternatives to this big pharma, which they believe is the thing. That's the thing, but she's tried everything. She said she tried everything. She'd given up. So I gave her a way to get hope back in her life, to not having shaking all the time, back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. It's miserable, you know, yeah. something, a way out of the misery. And then when that little piece of ray of sunlight comes through, of truth, of a real way to help yourself, what else can now open that crack? You're opening a crack where their mind, see where their mind can go to help them while there's time but be respectful and kind and just a little bit of thing. I, it was just that little bit of thing and I still had more time and I just talked about the weather and things like that. Nor, not unusual things about the weather, you know, like my yeah. understanding of the weather. <laughs> oh, well, it's the kid drought. <laughs> just the regular, oh, it's cold and, you know, oh, the spring's right. coming in and you know, it's all yeah. that kind of the snow, you know, that kind of thing, you know, so just regular conversation. And, you know, I was in the DMV and it was like a tomb in there. <laughs> I go, who, like, who died here? <laughs> you know, it's like, and then, you know, I started a conversation and then pretty soon everybody's laughing and having a good time. And again, at that point, you got people out of that realm of not talking to others, not sharing, not caring, where they're sharing and laughing and having a good time. Now you've lightened their mind to where you can share a little bit of something, 
see what their interests are. And something small, not something huge that makes them go, oh, that's freaking impossible. Certainly not the orange bath. <laughs> no, don't go into the orange bath. TDS syndrome. Oh, no. <laughs> Here comes TDS syndrome. No, I don't want to talk about that. We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> so. Orange man in numbers is 88 Trump. Orange is 60. Man is 28. And them together is 88 Trumps. So it's all coded. Yeah. Um, how long do you think? So you, you said there's going through the egg timer. You've got, is it, did you say A and G timelines? Is that what you said, Gene? Yeah, the, the Arma line, you know, Book of Arma, you know what I mean? Book of Revelations talks about that, the last war. Okay. Where the earth is, is seared by fire and the sun and the moon turn blood, the, the sky goes black as sackcloth and the moon turns blood red. It's what happens when you go into a photon belt and the sun goes out and then it goes super, it has a CME, a, you know, it, has a super ejection, a coral mass, full coral mass ejection. It's the perfect description of it. And then this wave of fire hits the earth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it, the sun, if you understand what the sun really is, which isn't what they're telling you, how does the sun really do what it does? So, you know, that goes into the electric universe. People can research that and understand that the sun is primarily not a nuclear furnace. It's actually a, um, it's Birkeland currents that create the energy the sun uses. And it's a harmonic oscillator. It's a resonant device and it's vibrating now already at fourth and fifth density. It's already split into two suns. There's the fourth, fifth density sun that's in a higher density or a greater density. And then there's the third density sun, which is the yellow sun. And so, you know, it's to understand how the sun is working and how creation works. And, you know, again, it's not dimension because dimensions are height, width, depth, and time, two dimensions of time. And so, and then you have a physical dimension of height, width, and depth, one that goes inwards to the singularity that's within everything, the, which creates quantum entanglement. So we're in six dimensions on third density. And then as you increase the amount of information and light and you go get more dense. So you jump to the next octave of density by going to fourth density and you have all the, the dimensions we have and you pick up two more and then you go to fifth density and you pick up or you pick up three more at fourth and two more at fifth. And so you have different dimensions while you're changing density you can't say fourth dimension fifth dimension because the dimensions are delineated by the density not the other way around oh and then the g line is what's that god's line the line that people are doing their very best to be in service to god's creation each other and everything in the highest interest of everything everywhere. The one and only God of all creation is everything. So the God line is a peaceful transition and the yes. A line, the A line, the Armageddon line is a, is a destructive one. Violent and destructive and you have a limited time frame, but until all life comes to an end on the third density of the earth. Wow. Talking of, you said we haven't got much time in your feeling and understanding estimation what do you think in terms of the length of time that we have until we get to that point of the split where one you know some will go to the god's timeline and some will go to the a timeline well people talk about you know the baby boomers generation x generation y whatever okay the various gen it's within the generation we are now in i would say it's most likely i think extremely likely in my understanding within this generation. But okay. again, I can't say very accurately to, the, to a date or a year because the years have been so messed with in the calendar. Yeah. So generation, what thinking kind of generation, a 20, 20 year? Generations are, I guess, are somewhere between 20 and 30 years. I don't know. It depends on how you delineate a generation. Okay. Wow. What was that gentleman's name 
I think his name was Bill that he did a did a piece with Kerry Cassidy and it's been edited into many forms and versions, but he talked about the singularity and said, however they look at it, it's coming to this, it's coming to this point and you can't stop it. What was his name? Bill. I think his name was Bill. Not sure who you're referencing, sorry. No, it's okay. The, I, the yeah. Of AI becoming absolutely aware and intelligent like we are. Is that what singularity you're referring to, or the singularity <laughs> to me? I think it was the yeah, the got it was the good singular. It, it was the it was. I think he used the word singularity. I might be misquoting him, but he was describing this ultimate thing in the cosmos that we get to this. We get to this juncture where things, you know, the outcome is the god. The good outcome is is achieved, and nothing yeah. can stop it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, yeah. And I want to remind people that what you choose to believe is absolutely true for you will be true. It's like you look at when Captain Cook was first went to the Hawaiian Islands, they even took, this is what I said, you can't prove anything to anybody who cannot believe it. They yeah. even took the native Hawaiians on the ships. They went into catatonic shop because in their mind, you could not build something that big out of wood all they had were dugout canoes they yeah. one piece from one tree that's it they had no way to have a boat a ship made out of wood that big but the shaman could see the ripples so later on the shaman constantly meditating or remote viewing it saw it and within the time he came back again then shortly all the other people could see it because the people who are at the cutting edge of where the truth is that are viewing it constantly and contemplating it at a deep, deep level to let go of the box their heads in. And it's this cognitive dissonance sets in. And so if you are absolute that the Arma line, the, I'll just go ahead and say it, the Armageddon line is the only line. There is no Nasara. There is nothing but this burn and this in war and we're in that time and everything's going to burn and everything's then that is, if that's absolute for you, then that is absolute for you. That is your choice. You're asking God for you to experience and everybody that resonates with you will go to that. And what does that look like? That looks like attacking everybody everywhere because that's what Armageddon is. That's mm -hmm. what you're looking of everybody turning on everybody. You can't trust anybody. You can't do anything. Everything's burning and on fire and the dead are rising from the ground. And it is literally you know, the oh. undergrowth merging with the surface where everything comes together and all of this death and destruction. It is horrific beyond comprehension. And you're going to come to Christ during that time. Wow man you cho you choose a hard path but that's a mm. choice and that mm. choice is a possible choice it doesn't mean it's the only choice because god is not like that god is about love and not making you suffer beyond comprehension so mm. god offers those that want to be loving and kind to consider and not sitting there tearing each other down their fellow christians or fellow persons if they don't fit with what you understand to be the truth let them go you know, for those people that I knew years ago or whatever ago that don't want to, you know, even my own sister doesn't want to, you know, hear Orange Man is, is just like hand in my face. <laughs> I love her. I still stay in communication because, you know, like I did with my parents to the end. Because what does it say in the scriptures? Honor thy mother and thy father. And that for me means my entire family. You don't cut them off because yeah. they don't see things the way you are, but I honor and respect their choices. And I only want, if they came to me in my mother and father's case, to understand where I was. After they saw how I was for decades, they wanted to understand it because they couldn't understand how I could be constantly forgiving people that are constantly messing me over. Mm -hmm. And I explained it. And then they said, how do I become the way you are? And I explained how to do that. And at the end, they did do it. And so then everything from then on for all of the rest of their experience in this creation that's billions and trillions of years to go will be now different. It enabled them to make a choice to not go there, 
to not experience that, to not have to go rise from the grave and by you know, walking around like a zombie, all of that stuff, no longer necessary. So it's to understand that there are two choices, not one. God does not give you, this is the only one, and you got to suffer like insanely terribly. Uh -uh. No, God is about love. And if you're going to come and be as loving and as good of a person you can be, you know, as I know you are, Tom, and all of the 17, you know, all of the 16 other hosts are the same on the envisioning we did, the freedom envisioning. Mm -hmm. What is that envisioning about? Freedom. Mm -hmm. And what does Galatians 1, 2 say? Freedom through the gift of Christ. We are free, but not to take the yoke of slavery again. It yeah. says it. So we were offered a way to not take the slavery yoke again. If you want to choose to do that, that's up to you. You believe there's no way out of it, then it's so. But if you absolutely know that's not true, which I do, then it's mm -hmm. not so. And, you know, the you can make that choice and that choice is out there and it's for us to offer people those choices while there's some done to do our best exactly thank you gene you talked about um so there's a there's a quote i saw recently from an actor from timothy chalamet um he actually plays a character called tom in um interstellar He's a younger man in that. He's now an adult, but he's a teenager in the film because um, it came out in 2014, so about 10 years ago, yeah. Um, but I saw this quote of his just yesterday, and he says, um, life is coming from you, not at you. And it makes me think of those things you've just discussed in terms of choosing timelines. Like people are adamant and they want to choose the, you know, the A-line, and all that goes with that, then then that's what they're going to get. But if you want to choose the God line, again, that's what you that's what you're going to get. That's what you get blessed with, and because it's it's we're projecting it, we're it's coming from us. So I, I was wanted to bring that up during the show, but then when you talked about what you just spoken about, it seems to tie in nicely and coming from an actor, you know, um, from from Interstellar. Um, 